to have our relationships. And um, when we get into the book about womanhood, we're going to learn what kind of relationships we should be building. I don't want to have natural relationships with women. I have purposeful relationships with women. The purpose is either we're friends for you to grow me or me to grow you. The purpose is either for us to build a relationship together so that I can introduce you to Christ or I need to say, I've tried to talk to you, baby, we, we done. Okay, good. God just brought you here for a season. I need to have relationships that say, this is your true sister. This is this is your sister in Christ. I put her in your life that you got, what did he say? Iron sharpens iron, right? So I put y'all together so that y'all can start sharpening each other up. I should not have relationships that don't understand what, what it's about. All of my relationships should serve a purpose. And if my relationships are natural, which means that I'm building relationships with folks that don't have a relationship with God, what's the purpose of that? But to introduce them to God. Because we don't, the Bible phrases it as what path does light and darkness have to walk together? How can we, we can't, we can't, we can't get together. How are we going to do that? So it's important that as we're building relationships and we're asking, we have to understand the significance of those relationships. That's going to be the person that's going to influence me. Yinka makes me laugh, right? She always does. She's bad. Always getting me in trouble. But you need a sister like that. You need a sister in your life that when things is going crazy, I can call girl, just say something because I'm about to go, about to lose my ever-loving mind up in here, up in here. And she can send that thing that'll just make you laugh and smile and feel good for the day, right? You need that sister in your life that's going to bring the truth of God's word. Like Sister Carol talking about pride, y'all. She just... She'd be bringing the conviction with the pride. Oh, and by the way, Carol, Yink, Vidia had your back last, last time. She she spoke up on your behalf, baby. She said, I, I'm going to speak for Carol because if she here, she would have said pride. <laughs> okay, so she had your back. So we want to make sure that the relationships that we're building, that we're building relationships that reflect our faith. When I'm talking to Miss Leela and Miss Leela, uh, she's always, I think Miss Leela gonna always win the prize because she always here first, okay? If Miss Leela gets on and she's like, I say, how you doing, baby? She, she smiles, that big old pretty smile of hers. And I go, oh, baby, hi, how you doing? That's, God is saying, I'm sending you sunshine through her. So we want to be careful at the relationships that we build with other women, because those are the people that are going to be on the battlefield with us, praying for us, encouraging us, influencing us. And if their head is screwed up and we're in the midst of getting our behind whooped and we call that sister who's got the screwed up head, guess where that's going to put us? <laughs> Why are you laughing, Miss Leela? Where do you think it's going to happen? If I'm going through some stuff and I call Felicia and I say, Felicia, girl, you don't understand. I'm going through some stuff. I just I just need to talk, talk to somebody. She go, girl, you need to just go ahead, kick her behind and get it over with. I don't know what you're standing up there for. And it's like, oh, OK. And now my head is off because now she's influenced my brains, right? And now my brains is all messed up. So I want to call Felicia. Felicia be like, oh, hold up, baby. Let me let me put the, the pot on low and let's talk. Come on now. You can't be doing this. Uh-uh. We can't be doing that. So I have to be careful not to be making social relationships that are in the flesh. My relationships with women should serve a purpose. Uh, and I just be, I be like, that's my sister. She got a girl, she doing it, right? So what do you think that does for me as a Christian woman? I'm seeing them doing it. I see them, they, hey, 
They said they was going to do this. They did that. And God didn't put that on your heart for 20 years and you ain't even started. Okay, come on. Because now God has used them to influence me. Right? Let's go to the last one. It says, what does war, what does war look like? It is filled with big and small battles. Does everybody agree with that? Okay. It says, it isn't comfortable. Does everybody agree with that? Then it says, it has casualties, it has repercussions, it has small, some level of pain, and it is always filled with a clear winner and a quick, clear loser. Is that a true or untrue state? I, I believe there can be a clear uh, loser to the battle, not necessarily to the war, though. Right. So how do we, what does it look like if, I, if it says some level of pain, what, would, what could that look like in our lives? If I'm in the middle of a war, my own little battle, right? Because he personalizes the, the battle for the war that I'm going through. What could that look like? Could it look, is, oh, is somebody about to say something? I'm so excited. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. It, it could be a silent battle. It can be a battle within you that you can't share with anybody. Just so you getting it from everywhere and you have nowhere to share. You have to run to God. You have to lead, lean on him and make sure that you're getting out of each war, what you need to get so you can go to the next one and then have that ammunition and that armor mm -hmm. for the next battle that comes along. What happens if God allows me to go through the battle and I don't get what I'm supposed to get out of it? What happens? Well, he prepares you. That's a that's a learning lesson for you at the time. And he prepares you to go back into that same battle again. But how do I keep from having to repeat that battle? If I have a battle of, what can I say? Let's say that my battle is with jealousy. Because that's something women do. No, I'm going to say insecurity because that's more popular. So let's say that I, I suffer from insecurity, deep, serious insecurity about myself, my walk, everything, right? And God sends me, allows Satan to attack me in that way. And I didn't win the last battle of insecurity. Anyway, what happens if I don't learn the lessons that God had for me in the lesson of me being insecure? And he allowed me to go through that battle, but I did not learn anything from that. What happens? And go through it again. He keeps sending me through it until I get it. But not only does he keep sending you through it, it gets worse each time. Well, why, each time is going to get worse and worse and worse because I'm not learning. I'm not listening. Why I'm not using what I need to use. I'm not listening. I'm not surrendering that from him. I'm not listening to the guidance that he's giving me. I'm not doing any of that. I'm going by my own understanding. But and why is that, that because we don't we don't want to learn or we don't want to do anything if we just want to stay in that or hold on to that battle? Ooh, we now see you stepping all over folks' toes. Mm, there are so many times when we just don't want to let stuff go. But D, now you know you was wrong for that. Just stepping all over mm. folks' toes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. We do that though. Let's be real. We do, we have those things in our life that we just don't want to let go of. My weight, I have not, I haven't delivered that over to him and say, Lord, you work that weight out for me. Ooh, y'all looking at me crazy. Uh, if, let's revisit that. Whatever it is in your life, no matter how small or big, that you cannot give it over to God and leave it, it is a stronghold in your life, no matter what it is. So if my doctor says I'm five points from being a diabetic, you must lose weight. Am I going over? No. Okay. I must lose weight. And I say, oh, woohoo, I, want, I lost 25 pounds. And she says, oh, that's great, baby, but you got 50 more to go. And I say, okay, okay, I'm going to exercise, I'm exercise. And then I get up in the morning, I'm like, oh, I don't feel like I got so much to do. I don't feel like exercising. Da, da, da. Instead of getting up in the morning and say, Lord, help me to get this, help me to get to exercise it, help me to eat right, help me to do what I'm supposed to do. When I 
am choosing, purposely choosing not to exercise, to go get that donut, to go get that piece of pie. That's my choice, right? That has now become a stronghold in my life. And if I'm not learning my lessons, if I'm not letting God have that portion of my life, no matter how much in the world's view it's normal, if I'm not giving that thing over to God, then that means I still have a hold of it. Guess who has a stronghold in my life? Y'all quiet, y'all quiet, quiet, quiet. Yes, ma'am. It's your body in the apple again because you are allowing Satan to tell you you deserve this and it's okay and it's all that. And you yeah. constantly biting that apple every time you are allowing that stronghold to take a hold of you. Yeah. That's the same portion of you that he has, that he owns, that he knows yeah. he can tap dance on anytime he wants to. Yes. Um, we see that with alcohol, drugs, pornography, even sex, that we have things in our lives that we like. Y'all, I like my cheesecake. I, I like my cheesecake. Okay? Cheesecake don't like me, but I love me some cheesecake. That's not something, when the doctor told me, well, you're going to have to cut back on the sweets, I was like, I'm sorry, come again? What'd you say? And it's like, that's a stronghold for me. I love my sweets. So I have to get delivered out of that. That's a war in my life that I have to acknowledge that that's what it is. We need to have our comrades have our back. We're doing these things because the struggle is real. We're doing these things because we may think we're women that have it all together. We don't. And if we stop making wars pretty, trying to give cute little names, well, you know, I'm struggling with my weight right now. No, baby, you haven't given that thing to God. That's why you still having problems. When we stop making our strongholds, our sin cute, and start calling it out for what it is, now we can start getting delivered from that thing. And it might take a minute.